What is up guys, Joe here, welcome back to my channel and today we are back with more Timo Bianchi here on PCM 2020 and we're coming off quite a disappointing race to be honest in Australia at the Herald Sun Tour but swapping continents today back to South America and hoping for a better race again. So before getting into this one properly I do want to take a look at the attributes of our riders because if we look at it we do have some growth already uh, you can see Marder up to 73 Mountain. We've got some growth on Bissiga, I believe. Zabul as well, increasing in sprints. Uh, maybe Ruch as well has increased in flats. Aliossi as well in Mountain. So I'm not going to read them all out, but you can see quite a lot of our riders progressing already. Like I said, it was a disappointing race at the Herald Sun Tour, but to be honest, it is a first category race again, so it is going to be difficult for a Conti team. We can't be expecting to win stages at all of these races like we did at the Vuelta San Juan. Anyhow, hoping for one today at least at the Tour of Colombia. So you can see coming up today we have six stages. Uh, we start off with a few flatter ones, a few chances for the sprinters there, then a very difficult stage four with a steep finish. Hilly one on stage five and then a mountainous stage to round out the GC. So then taking a look at our squad for the Tour of Colombia, we bring a strong GC squad with the likes of Gino Maza, Giovanni Aliossi as well as Matteo Fabro. So really going for that sponsor objective today. However, also Rick Zabel in the sprints for those early stages. And then really acting as domestiques today, we have Alessandro Covey, Giga Horvatz and Simon Pello. Okay, then the Tour of Colombia is underway, as you see, and a very nice plus day for Rick Zabel, our leader, for today's stage. Anyhow, I do want to take a look at the start list very briefly. You can see Quick Step bringing just a six-man squad here. A bit strange right there. Really some backups with Seneschal, I would say. We've got some young guys from Movistar and then the likes of Sevilla, Aldemar Rez as well, Diego Camargo. So similar names that we had at the Vuelta San Juan. Okay, 12 k to go and there has been a fool, including our man Giovanni Aliotti and it's a terrible time for the Italian, really, really is. And to be honest, we can't really drop anyone to help him right now. Hopefully these guys will work with me and maybe he can get back into that peloton in time and not lose any time today, but that is gonna be really difficult for him. That's a real shame because he was one of our options in the GC for sure, but Maybe we'll have to rely on these two men right here instead. So then six and a half K to go. Giga Horvat doing a fantastic job for the team right here, bringing us right to the front of this group. And I'm feeling quietly confident about this one because I'm not really sure it, the quality of sprinters at this race, to be honest. Uh, Aliotti can't get back in, it would seem. But anyhow, four K to go on the front. Palau now up to 99, I do believe. Three and a half K to go. We do have quick step to our right. Probably going for Seneschal today, who's not the best sprinter, I would suggest. Anyhow, 2k to go for Palau. Maybe sprint with Kobe right now. And then we can go with Zabul into the final kilometer. Let's go, Rick Zabul going for the line versus Florian Seneschal. It's really close. Really, really close in the end. Do we take it? Yes, we do. You know we do. Rick Zabul is on insane form right now. Another win for the German. Look at this camera angle right here and what a battle it was between Seneschal and Zabel on the far side of the race. But the German edges ahead into the final meters. There it is then, Rick Zabel on the top step here in Colombia. You love to see it guys, you absolutely love to see it. So we couldn't ask for a better start bar Aliossi losing three minutes. He can't be our guy in the GC but maybe an option to throw up the road in a breakaway later on. But today, all about this man. On to the next one then, and another battle ensuing between Seneschal and Zabu today. Let's get it. Beautiful scenes here then, as we travel through Colombia into the final kilometers of the race. However, you can see the final is on this short circuit, so there are some corners in the final that we do need to be aware of. 17k to go now, and the break have half a minute up the roads. So then 8k to go in this one, we can see, and we do have Quick Step on the front. Kovi can now up this maybe to 93 though, 
and he is coming past the Belgian man on the front. Seneschal a bit further back. I wonder if we'll see another one-on-one -on -one battle basically between those two guys. Uh, but 5k to go. We do need to be careful now. Uh, try and keep these guys on 99 maybe. Kovi doing a great job despite this minus two day. Up to 99 now with Giga Horvat doing a brilliant job again. Seneschal to our right and we do need to watch out for him. I do believe he is our main opponent today. Maybe I've gone a little bit too early here though. Into the final kilometers. Polo can now go. And Zabal is unleashed into the final kilometers. And oh my, we're going to take this with utter ease. What a win yet again by Rick Zabal. And what a lead out by Polo and Horvat today. I'll be honest, when I started this save, I didn't expect this man to be so, so good at the moment. He is completely unstoppable and when you look at our competition, I mean, it's not the strongest. I don't know what happened to the sprinters here. Seneschal was nowhere in the end, but we do have some kind of 72 rated sprinters as you see right here. These guys absolutely nowhere at the moment and Rick Zabel dominating the sprints. And just so you guys know, we are still on this times 1.1 difficulty and a few of you guys have asked for my graphic settings. You can see them right here. Um, I kind of put them down to very high because I prefer a nice frame rate to all the graphics being included. However, we do take a break from the Colombian race today and we head to Turkey for the Grand Prix Alanya. A hilly one, it would seem, and a short one as well. Let's take a look at our squad. So Stefan Biska probably leading the squad here today. However, we also have the likes of Marcus Wildauer, Zimmerman, Rutsch, Mauro Schmidt, Seb Schumberger and Antonio Tiberi as well. So quite a few options at this one. So we get underway as you see in this very nice kind of stadium section at the beginning of the race. Seems it will be the finish as well, I do believe. Some good form for Schmidt, but Biska, I do believe with his attributes, has to be our leader. So I didn't actually attempt to go in the breakaway, but if we take a look up the roads, we do have a 10 man group and that is a rare sight on this PCM, it would seem, and some potentially pretty dangerous riders here as well. I've got to say guys, this stage is made unbelievably well. Big props to whoever made this stage because so much effort has clearly gone in. Um, however, I am now going to pace as we hit this hilly section. So put our guys up to maybe 90 on the front. We do want to ensure a very high tempo, maybe to drop some of the pure sprinters. Oh my, we've had one little hilly section and I'm not gonna lie, it's actually insane how difficult this race has been. We've been dropped out of the front group, uh, simply caught too far back in this one right here. Try and move up maybe now on this deeper section, but you can see groups all over the roads at this point, massive splits already. So then more climbing still to come today. We have Biska and Rutsch looking pretty good. And although Rutsch looking slightly stronger than Biska today, um, he's just not as good a sprinter, so hopefully we can nurse Biska to the end. And 20 riders with a big lead, as you see. So one more lap then of this super difficult hilly section and down to 16 riders in this group. Schmidt pretty much done now. He is going out the back. Let's try and make sure we're staying right to the front with these guys. But you can see, so, so difficult at this tempo. And we're literally getting dropped almost on 90. Let's try and drop this to 85. In this group, the likes of Sebastian Berwick. But up the roads, Antonez is going out the back. We need to continue pacing to make sure we're staying to the front. And there's eight riders in this front group. Oh my, this is so, so difficult. Right, 30k to go. We have six riders at the front. Paterski, by far the best sprinter, I would say. Bar Bissiga, he is the best sprinter um, in this group. So we do need to try and nurse him to the end with Jonas Rutsch. So I'm actually going to try and protect... Stefan Biska, see if we can get him into that final sprint. Oh boy, it's getting difficult as we have Johnny Brandau going out the back, down to five it would seem at the front. In fact, the Portuguese trying to hold on uh, and Biska really not feeling it as you see. Few more tiny hills left, can we hold on? It's gonna be really difficult, but finally these guys now seem to be struggling as well. So they're not happy with the relaying, so let's try it. Jonas Rutsch is going to try and attack these guys uh, you can see he's pretty much done. Can we try and get a gap? 
and we do have a very small lead, but this will allow Stefan Biska to just sit in just for a little bit and make these guys do the chasing. You can see Roach pretty much done, uh, but Biska saving a lot of energy right here, whilst Talman is going to have to do that chasing, and he looks very, very tired as well. Oh my, look at this. Bissiger just sitting on the wheels. And you know what? Let's try it again. This time, Bissiger on the attack. Talman is now done. That worked to perfection. Pataski is done as well. And Stefan Bisca, I do believe, will be able to ride to victory here. What great teamwork uh, with Jonas Ruch here. You can now sit on Talman's wheel, try and get a third place. Pataski will get second. But Stefan Bissiger, what a ride. And he's going to get his first win in T-Mobile Colors here. So Pataski is not going to be close to bringing in Bissiger as we come back into Alanya. You can see really, really nicely made, as I've already mentioned. Rich can maybe try and even get second, you know. But anyhow, let's concentrate on Bissiger. He will get the win today. He can celebrate as well. You guys have said I need to do some different celebrations. You'll see one right there. Bisca, uh, Bisca celebrating a lot over the line. Rich will sprint for third. Maybe could have got second. No issues though. What a result for the team here. So Bissiger on the podium in Turkey. And I thoroughly enjoyed that race. That was so fun. So a nice little break from Colombia. And you can see morale very good in the team after that result. Let's try and win another stage with Rick Zabel. Oh boy, big moment right here because Rick Zabel does go down. Diego Camargo is down as well. Oscar Sevilla is down. So we could potentially make these teams do the chasing. Um, to be honest, I think we should get back on pretty easily. You can see Giga Horvat is going to wait as well because we do want to give Zabul the chance to contest for his third win in a row right here. So hopefully these guys can bring us back in. So then 8.5k to go in this stage and we're in a very good position yet again, mainly down to Giga Horvat. Um, it has been this Argentinian team working very hard for Naranjo in this one, uh, but he has been nowhere in the first two stages. Anyhow, Giga can now go up to 95. We can just use everyone's energy gels into the final 5k and we're right at the front of the peloton in a perfect position coming into Bugo is today. Anyhow, Palau up to 95 as well. Marda in a good position, so we're looking all good right there. Let's try and concentrate on Rick Zabu, though. A minus two day could make it difficult. Palau up to 99. Naranjo in a much better position into the final 2K, and they're coming around us a little bit. Anyhow, Kovi can go and we'll uh, select everyone. Zabu can go with one kilometre left in this one. Naranjo looking pretty good. Zabul on the right, but Naranjo is going to take his first stage win. I think we'll get second or third. Only third for Zabul today. We couldn't quite get the hat trick, uh, but still a decent result in this one. So finally, we are beaten in this episode. It's been a while, but Zabul still comfortably in the leader's jersey as well as the points jersey. So been a fantastic start to the race, of course. So then on to the first uphill finish of the race so far. And it does seem... James Knox of the Coinic Quick Step will be the man to beat in this one. However, we all know just how good Oscar Severe is in South America. Let's see how this one goes. So we do have a few sprint points available here at this intermediate sprint, as just two riders are up the roads, as you see. So Zabul coming to the front of this group, and I might try and just sneak these points. We may as well. Why not with Rick Zabul? A few guys actually going for this, but Zabul... Too strong a sprinter at this race, it would seem. A few more points up to 68 now. So 11k to go in this one. We do have Movistar on the front. Kovi now coming to the front for the squad though. And looking at this finish, it does get quite steep to the line. However, I'm going to try and lead our guys out in kind of a little train formation. Uh, so I think Giga can pull over as soon as we hit this uphill section. And we have Palau, Fabro and Marza, who remains our leader despite Fabro on a slightly better day. I do believe his lack of acceleration and sprint could hinder him just a little bit today. However, six and a half K to go, Giga done a fantastic job to put our guys in a wonderful position right here. So he can pull over, Palau can now go up to 85. Uh, we'll rest with Kovi as well. Uh, Palau on the front uh, at this point, up to 90 and the pace Really, really high, as you can see. Uh, Giga can just pull over, get out of the way, uh, so Marza can get onto his teammate's wheel. But just 5k to go, 
and I'm very conscious of that very, very steep finish. So I don't want to go too hard just yet. We'll keep Palau on maybe 85. Maybe we'll see some attacks. Oscar Sevilla right here. We can expect to see an attack from this man. Maybe James Knox as well. We can use our energy gels at this point. Uh, Palau doing a very, very good job. I think it's going to be difficult for anyone to get dropped on this climb of the main GC leaders. Uh, but now it gets very, very steep. So up to 93 with Palau. Uh, Knox moving past us. The, the Brit very, very dangerous, of course, at this race. Palau can try and get out of the way of Fabro, which he does very nicely right there. So one and a half K to go. And it seems like an uphill drag to the line. We have Knox and Camargo at the front. Fabro trying to put Marza in a good position, though. Trying to conserve a little energy. Knox is sitting in the wheels at the moment. Fabro can give himself up and Gino Marza can try and sprint into the final. We're not going to take this one though. Diego Camargo looking very, very good. And what a win for Diego Camargo. I think he'll go into the leader's jersey as well. Daniel Diaz is second. We have Montana in third. I think we'll get fifth here with Gino Marza. So a slightly tough one today, but keeping our guys in that top 10 in the GC, which is of course our sponsor objective at this race. Despite getting those two wins, they won't be happy without a top 10. But Camargo now with a commanding position in the GC. So then the penultimate stage of this tour of Colombia and a very punchy finish today, suiting the likes of Sevilla with some good sprints and maybe even Gino Marza. So we are now approaching this intermediate sprint. I'm trying to pick a good wheel with Rick Zabel just to try and cement our place in this points jersey. 1k to go. Let's try and come over the top and we're looking very, very good there. Way quicker than Gomez and the rest and we take those points very, very comfortably indeed. We should hold on to this jersey without issue. So then 20k to go pretty much in this stage and the pace does up right here. I was thinking I was going to try and attack with Simon Pelle right here uh, because we do have a downhill and he does have some decent downhill today. Uh, anyhow, despite this very high tempo, oh, it's just too high. It's just probably too high. Maybe I can try something on the downhill with Pelle. So 18k to go. We're just going to give it a go anyway. Simon Pelle trying to attack off the front. Uh, but you can see we're even getting blocked off right there. But we should be able to create some separation. And we do just about. Uh, he is a minute down in the GC. So they shouldn't really chase him uh, for that reason anyway. Uh, it's a big, big attack by Pelo right here. These guys not reacting too much immediately. Let's try and pace 85. See if we can build this margin into that final climb. Unlikely though, of course. So then 9k to go. And Pelo pretty much bought him right here by quick step mainly. So... Doesn't look like the best attack. I think I'll just drop it to 80. We will catch him. Aliotti maybe can join up with him uh, as we are doing right here. There you go. So Palo up to 90 with 7k to go. Uh, a bit too early to use our energy gel. So we won't, we, are, we won't do it just yet. Uh, we're going to try and pace super hard into this final climb. 5k to go. Maybe we can use those energy gels right now. There you go. And we're putting our guys in the perfect position it's not too steep, but it will suit the punches for sure over the sprinters. And now we have three and a half K to go. So Aliotti up to 99. Let's try and pace really, really hard right here. Maybe I can try something with one of our guys. But to be honest, this is probably the best tactic. I'll drop it to 90 right now with Aliotti. 2K to go. Gino Marza and Fabro looking pretty good. These guys now coming to the front as Aliotti is done. 1k to go, Fabro slowly up to 99. Can we grab Diaz's wheel? We're going to have to just sprint with Marza as well. Probably a bit too far back though. Two fights for the win. We're coming through a little bit, but I think these guys probably have something left. And they do, as you can see. Oscar Sevilla versus James Knox. It's a very close battle, but James Knox just the heads of Sevilla Camargo solidifying his leads in third. Marza looking good in sixth and there could well be a gap right here. So maybe Fabro going to lose some time today as well. So then there was a gap as you see. So the top six guys look the strongest in this GC. Quite a few gaps here as well. You can see the new time gap system working absolutely perfectly it would seem to me. So Gino Marza now into fifth place in the GC. Looking good for that top 10, but a very difficult stage coming up tomorrow. Quick look at the other comps then, and Rick Zabel looking good in that points jersey, but Oscar Sevilla 
with a mountain coming up, he could well steal that from us. We will see Camargo in the KOM jersey and maybe we can take that youth jersey uh, if we can beat Knox and Camargo in the final stage. Here it is then, the finale to the GC battle and the Tour of Colombia this year. James Knox is going to be very tough to beat, but Sevilla, Rez and Camargo will have something to say about that. Gino Maza needs a top 10 for the sponsor. Can we do more though today? Let's see. So we're underway here and I'm going to try and go in the breakaway with Giga and Rick Zabel today because if we can get Zabel up the roads, uh, he can maybe take some of those intermediate sprint jersey points which hopefully will put us ahead of Oscar Sevilla. So hopefully they let at least Zabel go. It would be good to have Giga with him. Uh, you can see not the best race days, a zero for Marder. So winning the race is going to be tough. Hopefully we can at the very least get that top 10 though. So here we go, 2K to go. And I'm not sure if any of these guys will challenge us. Um, only this fella has a few points in this competition. So actually they do go for it, catching me off guard. I did not expect them to sprint for these. Rick Zabel, oh my, we're beaten as well. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it, man. This man expects us to work with him after that. He's only just joined up. We're gonna drop him on this climb. I can assure you of that. Look at this then, that is a beautiful sight, beautiful scenery here in Colombia and Aroyave, I'm going to try and say it, absolutely butchered it anyhow, he is now at the back so Zabul can rest assured he will take these points. So the tempo in the peloton really has increased and you can see quite a few guys already out the back right here, some big big splits. Not sure if there's any real GC favourites here. Anyhow, we do now need to focus on this intermediate sprint with Zabul. Let's see if these guys go for it. It doesn't seem they will, so I think we're okay. Zabul can take all six points. We can now sit up in this group. We've done our job for the day. I do believe we've won this jersey. Here we go then. 12 and a half K to go in the Tour of Colombia. And taking a look at this climb, it is so, so difficult. Definitely the potential to see some massive gaps in this one. So I'm going to protect Aliotti and Marza. Aliotti should be the strongest helper for Marza today. 74 mountain on Marza. So hopefully we can put in a decent little performance. The pace very slow to start to my surprise. So Pelau, or Pelo can relay a little bit on the front. Maybe 75 and these guys can just sit in on his wheel. Let's see if we can drop some riders right here. Okay, and Aldemar Rez on the attack already. Very, very early attack. Oscar Sevilla reacting as well. Very, very early to attack on this difficult climb. And we have 64 riders now in this peloton. Uh, you can see it is Colombia chasing for their leader. Of course, Diego Camargo in the leader's jersey. Sevilla and Rez are gone at this point. We're going to take it steady. So we're still pacing 85 in this group behind and Movistar really, really trying to bring in that group ahead because we now have Knox in this group as well with Montana and Camargo. We have Aldemar Rez clearly feeling very good today. He is going for the Tour of Colombia. Pelo is done. So Fabro can now protect Gino Marder should have done that a minute ago to be fair. Uh, these guys can all use their energy gels with 4k to go because we're really, really struggling to stay at this tempo with Gino Marder. Gonna drop into AC actually. Fabro almost done and a lot of the Movistar team are done as well. Aliossi does need to get up to his teammate here. Uh, so we're gonna drop this to 75 because still 3k to go. And Diego Camargo has cracked. He is not gonna win the Tour of Colombia. What a ride! by the EPM Scott team here as they have two riders right at the front and it seems Aldemar Rez is going to be unstoppable today. Gino Marza pacing himself up the climb. Oscar Sevilla has now cracked as well into the final 1.5k. I think we can now go 85 with Marza. Our place in the top 10 pretty much secure at this point as even James Knox is struggling. I'll try a little attack away as well but you can see Aldemar Rez what a performance right here. He's going to win by an absolute mile here in Colombia. And I think we'll get a, a top five place, maybe even a top three place in the GC if we can uh, escape James Knox right there. Montana gets second as well. What a rise by that team. But Gino Maza with a very respectable third place today. Aldemar Rez, what a performance winning the Tour of Colombia here. Winning by over a minute from anyone from another team. 
I do believe Gino Marda does go into a place on the podium, so we can be very happy with this result for the team. James Knox and Oscar Sevilla in particular, I do believe will be disappointed with this result. Aldemar Rez does take the climbing classification as well. We didn't really go for that at all, but Marda in sixth. And Rick Zabel does hold on to that points jersey, so very nice to take a jersey home. What a final stage of this race that was, guys. Really surprising to me that Knox and Sevilla weren't better, but Aldemar Rez from another planet today, it would seem. And I think we can be super happy with this race as a whole. Podium in the GC, obviously the first two stages as well. Didn't quite manage to pick up another after that, but really, really happy with the sprint jersey, two stages and a podium in the GC. So as you can see, we're now some way into the season and I'm thinking I may try and cover this Turkish race with this super short mountain stage, which would be really fun. Um, and maybe the tour of Rwanda all in the next episodes. Really looking forward to the tour of Rwanda. Uh, you can see it's a sponsor objective and look at some of these stages, absolutely crazy, crazy stages finishing on this cobbly hilly stage. So should be really, really fun in Rwanda. Uh, but yeah, we'll try and cover that in maybe one episode. We'll see how those races go. But anyway, guys, I do hope you enjoyed this one today. I really enjoyed the races in this episode. You can see our balance now up to about 96k. So building that up quite nicely with the prize money we are winning from doing well in these races. And I do want to take a look quickly at the rankings. You can see Natu Buani, the best rider at the moment, it would seem, in the season. But Bissiga doing very well in the Conti races. Marda 2 after that very good result right there. Looking at the team classification, we are still the best Conti team, excluding the Conti pro teams, of course, doing super well in this competition, trying to hold off the likes of Team Yukio and EPM Scots by the end of the season. And we're even above some of the World Tour teams still, very early in the season, of course, but above some World Tour teams, that is really, really nice to see. Anyhow, guys, if you enjoyed this episode of the T-Mobile Bianchi career today, drop a like on the video. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. And remember to subscribe if you're new. I will catch you guys in the next one.